Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to another rendition of Raiders of the Story Arc. Have I talked about Batman the Animated Series yet? Okay, a few times. Well, then you can gather that it was a huge hit. So, with all that popularity, it only made sense for the makers of the show to move on to the next logical superhero... Yes, Howard the Duck. They took their entire creative team and they went into Howard the Duck SUPERMAN! Unlike the Batman cartoon, though, they did just start out in the middle of the story. Here, they had to go straight to the beginning of his origin. And give him, you guessed it, a story arc. But this would be tricky seeing how most people already knew the story arc of Superman. Moses with aliens, so it would be a little bit more difficult to make this fresh and new. Does it succeed? Well, let's take a look. So we get our first episode, The Last Son of Krypton. Yeah, last one until we see the guest star list of future episodes. We get a look at Superman's father, Jor-El, who is very happy that his science suit is able to hold all of his chin. Gathering readings for final subterranean probe. <laughs> He gets attacked by a Metroid monster, but manages to fight it off and continue with his research. Research that a giant computer named Brainiac is very interested in knowing. The Planetary Council demands that I analyze your data. People don't like to be spied upon. I'm sorry, jor -El. This cartoon series is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize. So we see that Krypton is a little bit more diverse than it is in the other movies. Not only do they have black people on Krypton, but also British people, too. Real British, not that fake British that Brando was trying to pull off. You'll start going over the data. I keep thinking, what if it supports your theory? What then? We can deal with it. This is Lara, jor wife. And of course his son, kal -El. Which begs the question, is the last name in this family L? They go back home to look over the data they've discovered. But Lara's father, played by Tony Jay, is not enthusiastic and tries winning his daughter over to his side. If he persists in predicting the end of the world, it'll be the end, all right, of his political and professional career. But what if he's right, Father? Try convincing the Council. He hasn't one support of his theory. Why is that? Solvan. Because you can never be wrong, jor -El. I never let my ego get in the way of the facts. Well, let me let you in. Dude, they have dogs on Krypton? How is it the evolution of this planet is almost exactly the same as Earth's? It creates creatures that looks like flying spaghetti monster mucus, and yet it still somehow produces human beings and dogs? How does that work? I don't know. Maybe God made them. So jor -El goes to the council and pleads his case. Please no doubt that the planet's core is undergoing a mounting chain reaction that will eventually destroy Krypton. Lunacy! Ask Brainiac! Yes! <laughs> nice outfits there, guys. Today's wardrobe is brought to you by the letter M. As I've stated before, the Templars are the result of a slight polar shift. He's Fate. wrong! He doesn't know! He was built to monitor all of Krypton and has, I might add, served us far better than upstart scientists with apocalyptic visions! Yeah, come on. Don't you know it's the job of conservative news programs to tell you it's the end of the world? Act now and we can save everyone! And how do you propose to do that? Put everyone in the Phantom Zone. <laughs> the Phantom Zone? I wonder what's in there. Nighttime sharpens, heightens each sensation. Ah! Darkness stirs. We can restore ourselves later on another planet. I built a ship. Listen, please. But nobody believes his story, and Jarrell is stuck trying to find answers, only to discover that Brainiac has been lying the whole time. You're transmitting your memory to a satellite. You're saving yourself. Am I not the repository of all Kryptonian knowledge? If the Council knew Krypton was doomed, they would frantically put me to work on calculating an evacuation plan. A futile gesture, given the time remaining. Wait a minute, jor built a ship, and they both must have known for the same amount of time that the planet was doomed. Why couldn't he come up with an evacuation plan? Hell, jor had a plan ready to go! Why didn't Brainiac just say, Bitches, you're screwed. Pile into jor car. It's a six-seater. But the guards locate him and try to shoot him down. I would 
might say that this scene is ripping off Judge Dredd, but that would imply that somebody actually saw Judge Dredd. So he escapes the guards and makes it home, where the family decides the only logical choice is to save their only son. Lara, I could send you with him. There's a risk, but if I have time to recalibrate the course... No, my love. I'm staying with you. I'd much rather risk my baby boy being sent into a dangerous world with no adult than leave your side, my love. Farewell, Krypton. So Brainiac takes off, as does kal -El, and the planet meets its timely demise. You know what just hit me? I don't think they ever specifically say in this version what it is that destroys them. Is it the inside of the planet? Is it colliding with another planet? Is the sun too close? Is it Marvin the Martian again? Oh, I'm going to blow up Krypton. It obstructs my view of Venus. Isn't that lovely? Mm. As we begin part two, we see Kal-El crash lands on Earth right in front of a couple known as the Kets. <sighs> Whoa, Martha, what are you doing? Who would put a baby in a spaceship? That's just my point. Could be Russian. A Sputnik baby. I don't care where he came from. All I know is he needs us, Jonathan. Look how he's reaching out to you. Ah, yes, to hell with calling authorities. We'll just replace the word kidnapping with adoption and all our problems will be solved. What do you think of the name Christopher? What do you think of Clark? So Kal-El has now grown up into a teenage Clark Kent, but he can't help but feel he doesn't quite fit in. Lately, I'm feeling kind of weird. You've always been weird, if you ask me. Hey, it's Lana. You know, the girl who's had a crush on you since we were three. You can tell me. Wait, what? You know, the girl who's had a crush on you since we were three. Okay, anyone who would just awkwardly say that, they're the weird ones. I think the only thing weirder is that Clark doesn't take her up on it. I mean, you're a teenage boy. I don't care what planet you come from. Your hormones would grab that Mary Jane wants some in a millisecond. And I could see things, too, like in the gym. Miss Stevenson's inside, putting up decorations for the dance. You're saying you can see through walls? So, how many times have you peeked into the girls' locker room, huh? <laughs> Lana! Lana! Oh, Twelve. So he brings up these issues to his mom and dad, and they decide it's finally time to tell him the truth. They show him the ship, as well as a strange device that came with it. Hello, son. You've activated the message we placed in your escape rocket. We are your parents. No. No, it can't be true. You are the sole survivor of Krypton, a planet similar to Earth in many ways. This was our... What? Oh, sorry, son. Advertisements. You may have already discovered that you are much stronger and faster than a normal human being. It will give you abilities that no other human has. You may also notice your voice getting deeper, sporadic hair growth, and people's inability to recognize you if you wear glasses. I'm not a freak. I'm not. I'm not! Clark, come back! The least you can do is not run like a complete pussy! You freak. But he discovers more of his powers and figures out that being a freak is, well, freaking awesome! And faster than you can say, what transition? He's suddenly grown up into a man and saving people in Metropolis. Just ask little Denitra Evans. I was fooling around the window when I lost my balance and fell. Suddenly this big blue angel with red wings came down and caught me. This is where they found Denitra, and that's where she fell from, 30 floors up. Clearly Demetra is possessed by the devil. Buy your torches and pitchforks here. This steals the front page of the Daily Planet from Lois Lane, voiced by Dana Delaney. And she's pissed because despite her wearing a skirt about as wide as toilet paper, she's not getting the attention she feels she deserves. Some sprouty new age granola crunching fluff piece on angels. Good timing, Lois. I want you to be the first to know I'm hiring a new guy on the city desk. Is he cute? Um, you tell me. Oh. <laughs> 
course, if a woman says that about a co-worker, it's fine. But if a man says that about a co-worker, suddenly it's a sexual harassment suit. I only said it once to you, Amanda! So Lois is teamed up with Clark Kent, and they go to cover the latest weapon demonstration from Lex Luthor. The next word in military defense, the Lexoscale 5000. Yes, like in most comic book universes, we're always looking to make you safer with the most psychotically designed death machines the world has ever shit their pants looking at. Lex Luthor. I'd like to say that I view the Lexo suit not as an instrument of war, but as an instrument to end war. Look out! War! Oh god, no, stop, Dimension. I'm the villain. I don't need to. Bye. Alright, you get one, but I never want to see you in trouble again. Got it? I'm gonna hold you to that never ever again! So the villains tried to destroy another plane to get Superman away from them, as this begins our third part of the story arc. Whoa, wait a minute. No wonder the plane went down so easily. Half the equipment isn't there! Everyone always wants to fly southwest, but then when you see where they cut corners... Of course he saves the plane, and a... Mime. Th thank God. And all of Metropolis is amazed. Where did he come from? What does he want? Look who I'm asking. Nice ass. I know, I heard it too. Here's a clip of something awesome to upset it. <laughs> Better? Okay. So everybody wants the story on Superman, and Clark is wondering what's the best route to take. Suddenly people are calling me Superman. They want to know everything about me. Some are even afraid of me. You'll always be Clark Kent. Superman just helps out now and then. Still, it wouldn't be bad if people knew a little more about Superman. I don't want anyone thinking you're like that nut in Gotham City. You know, spider something. So Superman decides to give the story to Lois in a not-so-subtle way. Excuse me, Miss Lane. I believe I'm the one you want to talk to. Where are you? Just hang on. It's okay! I learned this by watching my parents! We just call this an adoption instead of kidnapping and everything will be fine! As far as I've been able to piece together, I'm the last survivor of a planet called Krypton. Krypton? Uh-huh. All I ask is that you tell the truth about me. And that is? I'm not here to scare anyone. And if they ever make a movie about my life, don't hand it to the guy who directed 300. I saw Sucker Punch. It was bad. So Lois prints the story, and people get the info they've been looking for. But there's still the issue of Lex's missing suit, which Clark now thinks might have been planned so that the Pentagon would pay even more money for Lex to make an even larger one. When all is said and done, this could net you a multi-billion dollar windfall. You're very amusing, Mr. Kent, is it? Nice work, Smallville. You're only the second person I've ever seen get under Lex's skin. Who's the first? Me, when I dumped him. Whoa. Ancient history. Anyway, what makes you think Lex... That's that! No, 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 no! You go back to dating Lex Luthor! Tell me everything! Give me all the details! You can let me know. He's bald down there, right? So Lois goes to do even more research aboard one of Luthor's ships. She gets talking with one of the heads of the ship, played by Malcolm McDowell. You must know there's a trade embargo between the U.S. and Kaznia. We're part of a diplomatic envoy trying to restore friendly relations. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Oh, damn it, Frank! Could you open that door any wider? I can think of some doozies. I'll bet. It's okay. We'll just say it's an adoption. So they tie her to a pole and get ready to X her off. We're clear. Loser. Bet you'll never guess what's gonna happen here. <laughs> I guess the S on his shirt stands for Speedy Gonzales. Underlay. Take cover! Your bra might also be missing. Just ignore that. Yeah, 
They got that angle because it was so important to the story. No, really, I swear, they got that angle because cinematically it just works so much better. It was much more compelling. I mean, what other reason would they possibly, you can't even hear me anymore, can you? Yeah, well, let's try this. <laughs> That'll teach ya! So long, sweetheart. <sighs> Never mind me, just a giant walking mechanical robot going for a stroll. Oh, you piece of shit! I'll stab you in the arm! So it looks like this fight is over and. <laughs> I'm going to the shop. Everyone clear the area now. But Superman does get back up and puts that evil machine in his place. <laughs> Asshole! So Superman saves the day, but there's still no evidence leading directly back to Luther. But that doesn't stop old Soup from paying him a visit. You see, uh, Superman, I own Metropolis. My technology built it, my will keeps it going, and nearly two-thirds of its people work for me whether they know it or not. Even you have to admit it's a model of efficiency. Huh, it's like Donald Trump, only he knows he's evil. Why don't you float on in and we'll discuss it? Say something! <laughs> I'll be watching you, Luthor. Though our designs may vary, our voices might change, and we may even work in a few swear words every now and again, I'll be watching you for a long time. Hey, look! There he is! So Superman flies off into the night and everybody cheers. The... and... what the fuck? What's with the walking clitorises? Brainiac systems activated. Well, I'm sure he's just going to enlighten people of the Kryptonian culture in a peaceful manner. So that's the Superman animated series story arc. How does it hold up? Well, for a story that most people already know, it's a pretty good reinterpretation. It feels a little rushed at times, which is weird. You'd think, being a TV show, they could have as many episodes as they wanted to explain it. But, you know what? It still holds up. The best parts are in the first episode, as you really do feel the dread and despair that's sweeping over our main characters. But the other stuff is good, too. Superman is good, Lois is good, Luther is good. It's a decent beginning to a decent show. If you ever get a chance, check it out. So, because I reviewed something positive this week, I'm sure you want me to review something negative next week. Well, okay, what's one of the movies that you guys ask me over and over to review? WHY DO I ASK YOU?! Superman!